SpaceX recently moved Starship SN16 from the high bay to a nearby rocket garden, all but guaranteeing an early retirement for the prototype. But after some time, Elon Musk wrote this tweet, SpaceX might test SN16 for hypersonic flight. So in this video, we'll see whether Starship can actually reach hypersonic velocities without a booster and also discuss why SN16 might actually never fly. First of all, what speed is actually considered hypersonic? So speeds between Mark 5 and Mark 10 or between 1.7 to 3.4 km per second are considered hypersonic. As of the making of this video, the maximum velocity a Starship prototype has ever achieved is 145 meters per second. This was achieved by Starship SN8 during the 12.5 km flight test. However, what is interesting here is that this speed was actually achieved during the descent phase when SN8 was not under the power of Raptor engines. The previous prototype, SN15, the first to land successfully, reached a maximum velocity of approximately 120 meters per second, again during the descent phase. Even though this is very fast, it is still less than half the speed of sound. So what Elon Musk is proposing here is that, if tested, SN16 will reach more than 10 times the maximum velocity any Starship has achieved so far. Now let's take a look at whether Starship has enough fuel capacity to actually reach hypersonic speeds on its own. In order to determine this, we'll calculate what is called delta V. In rocketry, delta V is just a change in velocity that a spacecraft can achieve by burning its entire fuel load. I think those who have played Kerbal Space Program already know what I'm talking about. Anyways, in order to achieve hypersonic speeds, Starship will need a delta V of at least 1.7 km per second. But SN16 will need extra fuel to attempt the landing burn as well. Currently, Starship prototypes attempt the landing burn at an altitude of 550 meters. While attempting the landing burn at this altitude, Starship requires an additional 250 meters per second of delta V. So in total, SN16 will need approximately 2 km per second of delta V to achieve hypersonic speeds. However, it is important to understand that this number does not take into consideration the atmospheric drag that Starship will experience during the flight. So just as a margin of safety, let's just 2x our delta V and assume that SN16 will need about 4 km per second to successfully complete a hypersonic flight test. Now let's calculate the delta V for a fully fueled Starship. As you can see here, there are two ways to calculate delta V. One requires the information about the exhaust velocity of the engines, while the other requires specific impulse. So after digging through the internet for some time, I couldn't find any concrete number for the exhaust velocity of the Raptor engines. However, the specific impulse of Raptor is already known. So we'll be using the second equation for our calculations. For this, we'll require the information about the dry mass of Starship, the wet mass of Starship, and finally, the specific impulse of the Raptor engine. The dry mass of current starships is estimated to be about 120 tons. The wet mass is just the sum of the dry mass and the mass of the fuel in the rocket. For starship, the propellant capacity, as mentioned on SpaceX's website, is 1200 tons. So a fully fueled starship will have a wet mass of about 1320 tons. Finally, the specific impulse of the sea level Raptor engine is 330 seconds based on the last known figure. For those who don't know specific impulse, think of it as a measure of efficiency for the engine. The higher the specific impulse, the higher the efficiency of the rocket engine. Now we have all the information required to calculate the delta V for Starship. So let's just put these numbers into the equation. After doing some back of the napkin calculations, it turns out that the fully fueled Starship will have a delta V of approximately 7.7 .7 km per second, which is almost twice our required value of 4 km per second. Even a 50% fueled Starship will have a delta V of about 5 km per second. And no, doubling the fuel capacity does not double the delta V. Why this happens is beyond the scope of this video, we might discuss about this in a future video. But trust me on this one, based on the numbers that we have, a half fueled Starship will still have enough delta V to complete a hypersonic test flight. So with this, it is clear that a Starship can easily reach hypersonic velocities without the help of a super heavy booster using just its three sea level Raptor engines. So finally, the question here is not whether Starship can reach hypersonic speeds, but the question is, will SpaceX actually test SN16 for hypersonic flight test? 
You see, before flying SN16, the prototype will likely need to go through one or two weeks of ground testing at the suborbital launch site. This would require the employees to evacuate the launch complex, which would stop the construction of the orbital launch site on which SpaceX is aggressively working on right now. Testing SN16 would lead to a delay in the orbital flight test of Starship. Ultimately, given that Elon Musk also stated that SN15 might relaunch, the same can be the case with SN16's hypersonic flight test. What do you think? Will SN16 actually fly? Let me know in the comment section. If you are new here, do consider subscribing the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.